All right, welcome back everyone. This is Lisa Thorpe. This is Alternative Health Tools. This is our very first podcast using Blab. So instead of being just audio, it is video as well. And as I was saying, I'm very, very grateful to have Ishwari J with us today. She is um, not only a friend of mine, but an inspiration in my life. And uh, I was uh, interviewing an amazing yoga teacher, Yogi, uh, and we were talking about the importance of breath. And from that moment, I was thinking I really wanted to talk about this topic. And Ishwari happened to be coming through San Diego uh, only a couple of weeks ago, and she was telling me about Celebrath. So I said, "That's it. We've got to talk about it." I'm, <laughs> I'm so excited about, excited to to talk about this. It's such a simple, simple thing. We all do it. We all breathe, but yet so few of us really know how powerful it is or how it can be used. So. And I'm not, I'm not an expert on this. I just am very inspired by the idea. And so, Ishwari, I want to just let you go ahead and talk about what you know best. Do you have three hours? <laughs> <laughs> or a lifetime? <laughs> yes, yes. So, Lisa? Yes. Yeah, if I may say, just, just my name is John. I'm the Lisa's producer for the podcast. And, this, and uh, I'm grateful for everyone's patience. Um, so at the, end of, at the end of the interview, we'll be opening up a seat. So if you don't already know, you can simply ask a question in the chat by doing a forward slash Q for question, a space and your question. And uh, I'll try to keep track of questions as they come up uh, during the show and uh, I'll read them off at the end of the show and you and Lisa can discuss and answer the questions. Sound good? All right. Yes, yes, please do ask questions because this is for you. We are here, we are, we made everything, we placed the right environment so that uh, this can be seed planted for you to direct your life wherever you choose using the power of breath. Um, so a um, little, little, little bit of a background. Um, I started to breathe 45 years ago. <laughs> 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 And I never stopped since. <laughs> you know, so it's a funny thing, but let's begin by saying that we take it for granted. <laughs> we just do it. We don't even think about it. And so uh, there is no words to describe the power of breath. And so for me to even attempt to write the power of breath, which has, uh, was a book that I, I published about, self-published about five years ago, uh, actually a little bit more, was about, I would say six years ago. And then I took it out of the market because I wasn't satisfied with the editing at the time. So it's being re-edited right now as we thought. It's gonna be republished uh, by a very famous publisher. I'm not gonna say any name right now. And so I'm giving you some of the snippets at the end if you can uh, connect and stay with us to learn this information. At the end, I will gift you uh, some of my chapters of the book so you can get started in using a, such a powerful and simple, like Lisa said, a simple technique that can change your life at every single level. Of course, the podcast is about uh, alternative health, but uh, it, it really spread out because at the essence of everything, there is a power that creates this whole universe, and it pulsates into something called prana or the vital force. Uh, you know, some of the uh, other uh, tradition may call it the chi or th other things, but if you look at all ancient holistic health, it's all about both monitoring this energy, balancing it, bringing more where it's needed, less where it's needed, and when you become a master of that, then you can master your mind. And as you all know, because you're very advanced people, I know it, if you're interested in alternative health, you are, then you know that your mind creates your, your reality, therefore your life. Change your mind, change your life, but you can't really master your mind. I mean, try, close your eyes, everyone, and think of anything except <laughs> a monkey. Do not think about a monkey. Don't visualize a monkey. Anything but a monkey, right? <laughs> <laughs> just close your eyes and just try not to think about a monkey and open your eyes. So maybe some of you did not, but most of us have a hard time mastering the mind. However, it's really easy to master the breath 
And the breath is not something you control, like they call pranayama, control of the breath. Actually, pran means to expand, ayama. So there's different way of translating. The classical yoga thought it was a control of something that's beyond control because it creates us to begin with. So it's really to expand, to become the servant to that energy so that it can serve us. So uh, again, background, uh, my, my relationship with the breath, uh, because I came with a, a, you know, a family that uh, was just very challenged in feeling safe, as you know, the fight and flight response, you contract and you go, oh! when you're afraid, you know, there's like something scary. And what do, does happen is breath goes, oh! you shorten it and it contracts into trauma that is actually pervading the entire tissues in the body and creates those patterns that are not only psychological and mental or subconscious, but they're also in the body. And so literally, as you breathe, different techniques, there are some breaths that are just more uh, uh, helpful to release the traumas from the past. And that's more of a, uh, of a uh, open mouth breath that I like, I prefer doing in groups because it's very intense and can be scary for some of us. But the pranayama is a, more of a long-term ongoing daily practice that brings you back into opening up the channels that have been closed inside you for so long, increasing he increasing health. health. <laughs> mm -hmm. By the way, it's a French accent that 45 years ago I was dropped into uh, the center of France called Rouen near Lyon, and that's where I started to breathe. <laughs> and, um, and I spent the first 21st year of my life in France, including in Paris, and then I, I got a spiritual initiation and moved into various ashrams, including India's, and it was all about mastering every aspect of my life that was my drive, and the breath was key. So I started to teach breathing 15 years ago, uh, realizing that most people understand the power of meditation, but they just can't sit still. And there's no more powerful technique than breathing to quiet the mind, breathing to increase energy, breathing to become more expanding, therefore more attuned to being in the flow of what is always present, which I'm gonna use the term grace, that we su supports us. So you don't have, it, have to do it all alone, whatever, finding the solution for your health issues. Some of you may are in, maybe, you know, I know a lot of people who are in excretional pain right now, chronic pain in some, doctors can't even find what's going on with them and they're tired to be on painkiller and as you know Einstein says it there is a solution to every problem but the solution is not at the mental frequency as the problem which is being created the breath can shift your frequency so you find the solution you need to trust the breath so I could go on but if you have any question uh, I just I'm so passionate about that as you can tell <laughs> so um so i mean i like, you, like i said i can continue or you can ask more specific question if you want it's all good uh, oh yeah no one more thing i'd like to do a little sanctuary technique together yeah. shall we do that to every beginning to every new beginning there's a deity in our in our tradition of yoga which is ganesh he's a cute little uh deity with an elephant uh, face and you don't have to believe in his uh, existence or anything, but I can tell you that when I repeat his mantra, uh, it's uh, it's open uh, gateway for miracles, literally things that I never knew could happen. So we'll just uh, breathe. We'll do a, a little activation breath. So I'm gonna have you inhale through your nose, exhale through your mouth, and the exhale is just spontaneous. So it's like, <sighs> So your mouth may move because you're, ex but you're not doing anything. You're just relaxing your jaw. That's all. The pace is okay. Whatever pace works for you. And then what I'm going to add to this, when you know how to do that, you're going to place your uh, middle finger at the base of the spine. That's the little pointy uh, spinal cord right at the base. And you'll press when you inhale and Toxic. exhale. So inhale, exhale, press okay. down. Then use the middle finger at the base of the skull and do the same. Inhale and exhale. Then press the bottom of the spine. Inhale, exhale. Top of the spine at the base of the skull. Inhale, exhale. Bottom spine. Base of the skull. Bottom spine. Base of the skull. Ten more times. 
two, three, four, five, six. You're doing good. Two more. All the last breath. Relax your shoulder and keep the breath in. You can relax your thumb and index finger, touching palms down on your thighs. You can smile. Shoulders back. Let the breath out. Root down through your sitting bones, wherever you're seated. Ground yourself. Make sure your feet are flat or you're seated on the floor. And then just feel your breath. I invite you to close your eyes and to turn your attention in being like sort of a witness. Just like when you watch a movie, you're not identifying yourself with the movie. You're just watching it. Whatever feels, uh, what, whatever feelings in your heart, just witness this. Witness what's going on in your physical body and just witness your thoughts like if it's not even yours. Just uh, <laughs> one of my mentors used to call them brain fart. <laughs> just thoughts. <laughs> not as relevant as we make them to be. And as you start to be a witness of all those parts of yourself, you're going to be starting to be in touch of a sort of expansion and a sense of knowing, knowing what's right for you. That's your connection to your intuitive self, to your inner guide, the guru, as they say, gee, you are you. You are the one you've been looking for. So go ahead and uh, continue breathing deeply. This time, feel your belly inflating when you inhale. Then your mid rib cage, then your chest. Hold just a moment and exhale. And do it one more time. Continue breathing deep as I invoke uh, the mantra of opening to removing all obstacles for the session together today. Om Ganga Rapataye Namaha Om Ekarantaya Vinmaheva Kratindaya Dimahita Nodanti Prachudaya Atam Kajanam Bhuta Ganadi Sevitam Kapita Jambu Bharasharu Bhakshanam Uma Shutam Shoka Vinasha Karakam Namami Vigneshvara Pada Pankajam Om Shanti 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 Him Thank you Thank you, thank you for being here again. You can open your eyes. Keep breathing deep as we continue our session together. How your do you voice, feel, Lisa? I feel wonderful. Good. Yes. And it, even, uh, you know, since we've spoken about it, I've just noticed, you know, just in consciously breathing, I feel better. I'm wondering, your, your voice was so beautiful. What does that chant mean? So I, I just really was a, short time we have, I just uh, um, evoked the archetype of God that uh, removes obstacle, and that's the archetype of Ganesh, and uh, the mantra uh, acknowledges him as a protector, acknowledges him as a, as a remover of obstacle, and as, a, as, an, as an archetype that strengthens us in face of challenges. So that's, that's, that was the uh, choice of invocation, because it's also a deity of all beginnings. So when you start the day in the morning or when you start a, a project, Ganesh is always there to support us if we can spend time to remember that we are supported. And really the whole spirit world that I was blessed to be in touch at age six through my spontaneous meditation, um, uh, it's always present, but because we're always in our head, it creates a barrier and they all want to help us, but they're like, they won't listen. They're so busy thinking, trying to make it happen on their own and will not allow support to guide us and to make life easier. And we're moving a different time on earth where this old way, the, what I call the, the patriarchal way of doing it all alone or in team, but from a point of view of not being supported by higher realms of, of intelligence, it's just not working anymore because we are called to step up higher. And so uh, it starts with a, a sense of recognition and humility that there, there is an alignment with a, a higher realm of, of support. So that's why we invoke today. It, it, um, it reminds me, I once read somewhere that uh, the, the word Lord actually means, it's, it's Latin uh, or its original um, meaning is the guide or the God within. 
So it's like when somebody prays um, in some fashion to, to the word Lord, they, they're actually evoking their own inner guide and to mm. align with, with a higher power. Mm. And so it's interesting, I think, that uh, mantras or prayer can help us to, to just get a, in aligned with a, higher, with a higher power. And do we feel like that's what the breath, uh, and we're talking about breathing for stillness, breathing to calm the mind, breathing to connect with a higher guidance, and and I think uh, even you know like the Hawaiians the Hawaiians talk about uh, the use of breath uh, in in their practices and what they teach. So we see it everywhere, and I'm wondering what is the what is the simplest thing for us to remember in our daily use of of breath work. The simplest the simplest thing to remember the uses uh, to use the breath. You say yes. Um, that's a great question, and I think uh, my answer is always the same for all questions. <laughs> it's all, it all depends. <laughs> it depends. It depends what's your intention, what are you looking for. Basically, in a generality, and that's why if you have more precise question, go ahead. But in generality, you want to start by asking, <coughs> what do I really want in my life? What's really dear to me? What causes me to wake up in the morning with excitement in my heart? What is meaningful to me? What would I do if I was to be told that I only have 24 hours to live? You really want to ask yourself that because when you do, it puts things in perspective and I can truly attach the mandatory essential aspect of bringing a breathing practice to your life to any of these answers you may make. Whatever your, your, your answer is, I want a more vibrant health, I want to take more time to take care of my loved ones and always, you know, if you're an overachiever, whatever the case is, the breath will bring it back to balance and balance is just to have everything come in place in a way that flows like in nature. I mean, nature does have chaos as well, but it's sort of a chaos in order. It's not that we uh, everything's going to be perfect, but our reaction to those things will uh, help us to stay in the place of the highest spiritual achievement is equipoise. It's a place where nothing affects us anymore. We just know the perfection of the informant of our life and that every greatest challenge are usually a prayer to an old uh, an, uh, an answer to an old prayer and even though it may feel very hard at times some people are going through a lot of challenges right now and it aches my heart to just think about that um, those are people who have chosen to 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 have those incredible tests in this lifetime to overcome some uh, uh, some great limitations so they can be free and so it's like hanging there and breathe and trust that the breath is this most direct path to the Lord, which is the divine within and without as you are saying. And by the way, a lot of people have some negative um, idea about the, those words like Lord and God, because it's being used, overused by religions. And a lot of us now have a uh, hang up with religions because religion had its good, but certain things were not so good so if we could just let go of, of past uh, ideas and belief system the word lord is a beautiful word uh in sanskrit is bhagavan oh bhagavan i just love saying it. it's like oh bhagavan the relationship with the lord is sort of sensual in in my yogic tradition <laughs> even though you can touch him you know the god god is visible and invisible it's everything so you can have that special devotional Om Bhagavan, hey Bhagavan, hey Bhagavan, hey Bhagavan, Muktananda Bhagavan. You can sing the name and just feel the ecstasy of the vibration, or you can sing, Lord, Lord, I love you, I love you so much. And you actually let go of those belief systems. And when you feel like in, in, enthusiastic, what happens is you do want to take a deep breath. Ah, because you ex ex so naturally the breath starts to open up. You start breathing. Look at a baby. If you got a baby handy, <laughs> a handy baby, check the way they breathe. <laughs> and just I'm, I've got from, my inner child. <laughs> 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 yeah. But if you have a little baby handy to just learn from them, 
Look how the belly inflates and deflates. This is the yogic breath. Yogic breath. Everybody, put your hands on your lower belly. Inhale, let it inflate. Rise your hands on your mid chest. Keep inflating. Rise your hand on the top of your collarbone and breathe. Exhale, all the air out. Put your, put your hand back on your belly. Inhale. Belly, mid rib cage, hands back up there and up chest. Exhale. I don't know if you can see my hand, but it's pretty easy. Inhale, hands on your belly, up to the mid rib cage. Keep breathing in, up to the rib cage. Exhale, all the air out. We're slowing down now. Be careful. Just breathe in the belly, really slow. Now, even the back of the rib cage, inflate. Mid rib cage, upper chest. Hold. Smile. <laughs> Once more. Belly and also the back of the rib cage, mid rib cage, and upper chest. And exhale, release your hands on your laps. Ah, and if, you know the deeper the breath. So what you want to start right uh, in the beginning is the same length in the inhale and the exhale. Super simple. Uh, also, you want to find out by just closing one nostril if one is clogged or not. You've got the moon and the sun, the male and the female, the receptive and or the more um, intuitive part of you and the more masculine or the more uh, intellectual doer. This yeah. needs to balance. It just shifts every two hours. Prana or that energy is constantly in motion. So you'll have a little bit of constriction shifting every two hours. You can ex especially feel it at night. And it's a simple thing. You want to uh, balance this. Where it's clogged, let's say, I'm so balanced, I don't have one clogged, so <laughs> it's hard to tell. But let's say it would be uh, the right. That the, uh, you, I'm mirroring you, so you're seeing me like if on my left, but I'm on my right, so you would be on my right. You'd be uh, igno igniting the, the sun, which is the male, which is the intellectual. So you'd be inhaling. I'm just going to do the right fingers according to yoga, but don't worry too much about it. It's the two last fingers and then the other rolls in at the base of the thumb. Don't worry too much about that. So you would just inhale, close the nostril, exhale, and continue just on that side. Just inhale, right, exhale, left. The one that's uh, a little clogged. Just do this a dozen times to balance out. And if you still have an imbalance, there is uh, a lot of technique, including putting salt water in your nostril with the neti pot. I'm sure right. Lisa knows about that. Yeah, it's it's at first a little uncomfortable, but it cleans you well. And it's incredible how you, you feel clearer in your mind when you do that. So that's easy to make sure you balance the right and the left nostrils. Um, what does that do? So you, uh, beside the balancing of the right and the left hemisphere of your brain, there are the main channels, Ida and Pingala, are crossed alongside the spine. It's funny because the pharmacy sign has that serpent kundalini sign. It's like they knew already. <laughs> That's exactly what's going on in our subtle body. And you can see it in meditation. There's a golden column of light from the base of the spine to the crown of the head. That's the main channel. It's the Sushumna Nadi, where the energy goes up through those uh, chakras and the Kundalini energy going up, and then there's this across. Uh, it shows in my book. If you get those chapter, I'm sure you'll get the picture. And uh, it's all about finding the balance, despite you know what whatever things happen in our uh, emotions or outside in situations, and to just really relay on that pillar that is your breath. Ah. <sighs> You mentioned the book, Ishwari. I'm, I'd like to hear more about how you decided and why you decided to write it. And you mentioned that you're you're changing it or you're expanding it. So what's what's happening with the book? Uh, I, I usually don't do anything unless I'm called by spirit. <laughs> and um, and and that's as being uh, the reason why I, I if taken me some time to rewrite this book. I was doing a lot of inner work. Last two years, actually, I was doing extreme uh, meditation. I uh, sort of closed my marketing business so I could really focus on my spiritual practices. And I was just on on my, my <laughs> church questioning, bless you. <laughs> it is the breath. It is very purifying. 
You are in purification right I'm, now. I'm purified. I'm purified. You are being all totally purified. Mm -hmm. Oh, drink a lot of water. <laughs> your bottle matches your shirt. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? This is beautiful. Very, very good. Okay, but a woman with a French accent shouldn't try to do an Indian accent. It's a little bit weird. <laughs> You did it pretty well. I did well. Okay, good. So, uh, so I received the, the guidance that it's it's a good timing now to re-edit the power breath breath, which I had put a, taken out of the market because I was just not satisfied with the, the way it was written at the time. And so uh, this is a good time now, but it took me all that time. And why did I write it uh, at first? It's almost like there was this delay teachings where uh, my guides, my spiritual guides, were telling me that I've, I was put down on earth to help people coming back to their essence. And one of the main tools I was going to use was the breath. And so since I had been teaching many forms of breath, including the more traditional yoga, pranayama, since oh, about 15 years, and also the breath work, which is more like the old holotropic breath work, if you know that term, or uh, birth, uh, rebirthing breath, uh, and I've I've used this uh, in uh, my process called Sede Breath. I'll tell you more of that, about that later. Uh, this was more of a more an emotional release type of breath, and I think you need both. And uh, the, the breath is a la carte. It can help with so many things, and whatever you say you need, there's a special breath with that. It's that powerful. And, uh, and, and you will receive the gift uh, in, in the chapter of my book. It's mainly the pranayama breath technique, but they are for different activation and different purposes. So it's being a, a calling from a, a higher uh, uh, realm that I was supposed to write that. And then they put me on hold, and now they are, they are putting me back on, on track to, to, to roll back on, on, on publishing the book again from a, from a deeper place, I guess, since I've done you, a lot of work. Would you would you drop your uh, website address into the chat and also any kind of references or resources to? Uh, okay. Like well, to I have I have a the the one that that works will with, with the breath uh, is just part of my yoga website, which is uh, City Breath, and the yoga website is Yoga Bhava. See, when you are in a marketer, you have too many websites. It's confusing. So many pages. <laughs> you know what? I'm not going to make you wait. I'm going to give you the link. I'll give it to you at the end again, but I'm going to give you the link also of my offer because that, that I may as well do that. <laughs> so that's, uh, it's, I made it simple, uh, ishwarispecialoffer.com. Can't forget that. So in that, yeah. in the Ishwari Special Offer, you get to put your email and get uh, the best chapters of my book. And then, uh, and then uh, I'll be in touch to not just you know say hey here you go goodbye because I know we need accountability when we have good habits. So I'll be in touch with you to tell you how to use certain breaths, and I I want to I want to support you through this process of of using it and not just putting the ebook download in your folder and never use it again because that's not anybody's use uh, of you know good 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 use of our time so so that's the offer the ishwari special offer dot com uh, and then my main website goes because I still do uh, consulting and 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 that's just ishwarij.com so um, so that's some of my main websites here so celebreath.com will give you some information about the process of using uh, breath secret movement neuro linguistic programming and EFT to uh, really unleash. This is more of a, the trauma release breath. Of course, I don't package it like that because people don't go like, you know, today I have extra money on my bank account. I'm going to spend money on, on trauma release. That's what I'm going to do. They don't really do that. But they do have things that are not working in their life. They don't know. They don't know what they don't know. They don't know that traumas are so buried inside them that it keeps them from living their life to the fullest. So, uh, so yes, yeah, so anything that's an issue that's stopping you in life, even chronic pain. Uh, I remember I, I met a dear friend many years ago who was in such a chronic lower back pain and turned to everything. They were telling him, we got to operate, take more painkiller, we'll put some metal in you. And he was very, he was an engineer, so he wasn't uh, very much uh, trusting in God and, and um, 
Uh, sorry, one second. I something popped in. Okay. So, Lisa, do you have some questions? You sort of look like you're you're waiting. I, to I was ask. just going to finish my story about this sure. uh, this this gentleman. And so he he found this book from Dr. Sarno in the in the bookstore, and he looked at it, and it was how to free yourself from back pain with no medication, no operation, no physical therapy, and it was all about started to just be and feel your emotions. And he was very resisting, but he took it on. He actually, at the time, it was ten, maybe over 10 years ago, so he could have one-on-one -on -one session with Dr. Sarno. He actually healed heal his back uh, in that way. So uh, the power of uh, alternative healing like that, especially if you add the breath to it and you have the courage to just face what we've been suppressing throughout our life, uh, you, the miracle happen. It happens all the time. So I just wanted to share that story and uh, yeah, Lisa. I, I, you actually went where I was, I was going to ask you, you know, how breath could be applied to change one's life. And like you said, it can be used to improve uh, physical health, overcome a, a physical trauma or an emotional trauma. I, uh, I can only imagine, I, I think that you could confirm that breath work could be used for success, uh, whether it's in business, because whatever challenge in business or in life you have, you can use breath. Uh, to gain confidence, to gain clarity. And I, as you were speaking, I was also uh, thinking about the actual physiological benefits of breath work. And we've talked a little bit about your background as a, as a yogi, as a yoga teacher, but I was uh, inspired to mention that, you know, in yoga, breath, breath is an important part of yoga because when you get in the posture, it creates that, that tourniquet tourniquet effect so now when you get out of the posture the oxygenated blood comes rushing through that joint your knee or your shoulder or the back where you were just contracted and the the oxygen literally works like scrubbing bubbles to heal the area and improve blood flow and I know uh, Ishwara, you are literally one of the most amazing yoga teachers and yogis. In addition to everything else that you that you do, uh, I, I just think that maybe you could add how how it works with yoga and the benefits um, in addition to to what we've already talked about. Sure. Yeah. The 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 practice of pranayama is sort of like the. Um, the uh, rug that supports the yoga practice, a pr yoga practice without a uh, uh, conscious breath. Of course, we always breathe, but uh, let's say a yoga practice where you are exerting so much that you have no uh, emphasis on the deep ujjayi breath, uh, which is a breath where you constrict your throat, what, like when you whisper. What's wh why do they constrict the throat? The, I've heard the about the ujjayi, ujjayi breath in yoga. What do you know? What's the purpose of of restricting the throat during the breath? There's probably many purposes that I'm not in touch with. I'm more of an experiential, and I I, I live from an inner knowing. So my experience, beside the way the re, the, the fact that it's a healing breath the constriction hits your body, okay. uh, it slows down. It's just like the, the theory of the, the uh, when you have a reservoir of water, you close the valve right. to create more pressure, right? right? It's just that simple basic. Yeah. You close the valve to create more pressure. That pressure increases the heat, but also the, 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 the whole idea of a longer breath, one of the many things I, I haven't shared yet is, um, one of the uh, knowing of, of the scriptures uh, of yoga is that when we were born, we were given a specific number of breath. And this is one of the karmic things that are not changeable. You can believe in manifestation. I'm going to create my life, whatever I want to do. I have the power to manifest. You have some power to manifest some things, but not everything. And certainly, um, very few uh, high yogis can change basically the date of their death because we were given this certain amount of breath. Now, that's an amazing news. If you actually restore the breath, the breath of the baby breathing, three-part breath, belly, midrib cage, chest, instead of what we do with this <gasps> chest breath all, all day long, this, that creates so much uh, anxiety and, and fear, which is usually expressed in, 
in, in different bypass uh, strategies that we've created since we're very young, pretending, you know, some people like to just make jokes, like everything is good. And they're like, <laughs> it is this, this fight and fright going on. And it's all about healing the, 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 uh, the nervous system, basically, that's being uh, trauma, uh, traumatized since birth, basically, and to be real and to be authentic. So back to um, the number of breaths you get every uh, for a lifetime, if you expand your breath, you get to live longer. It's that simple. If you breathe. So I use a mantra to remind myself of, of yogic breath throughout the day. So if I say in my, in my head, inhale, Om Namah Shivaya, exhale, Om Namah Shivaya. I'm going to put it here so if, you, if you guys want to know on the chat. Om Namah Shivaya, which means, um, which means I bow to my inner divinity. Well, the length, and the, by the way, Namah Shivaya are four, five syllables that purify the, four, uh, the five syllables that purify the five elements in the body, which is water, um, earth, water, fire, ether, uh, air and ether. So you're also purifying as you re repeat it. But so it's like when people are leaning and all my friends love to snuggle. So when they snuggle, they're like, oh my God, what's going on? You're breathing twice slower. I said, because I breathe normally. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> I'm actually normal. <laughs> this is the way we were breathing before the, those trauma. It just it, it takes to rehabilitate yourself. So you expand your breath. And when you do that, it's just obviously it's going to create longevity, uh, balance your emotions, and uh, help you and support you in your yoga practice, of course, because you, you were talking about the, the physical uh, uh, health. And I love how you say uh, the, the uh, with oxygen, uh, what do you call Scrubs. <laughs> it's <laughs> right. a scrubbing effect. It's kind of true. It's. It's, uh, I mean, look at a, uh, make a, a blood test of a blood that has no uh, oxygen. It's very dark and thick. And you can test your blood on, on an inhale and you can test your blood on an exhale and pull out your blood and have a different uh, result. Uh, well, you want, a, you want a bubbly blood. <laughs> you yeah. cannot want your blood to be lighter and, 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 and thinner in color unless you are one of those people who have uh, a thinning of blood that's an extreme case but uh definitely it will allow to carry nutrient to remove toxins i mean oxygen it has an element of the detoxification for sure now you blend this with movement like hatha yoga or even jumping on a trampoline like lisa and i <laughs> love to do <laughs> forget about it. you add breath movement and uh, and on the top of it sound and you will never get sick. I mean, there's just, this is the essence of, of life. This is, life comes from a pulsation that started with sound, pulsation into the, the, uh, the, the breath, the, the prana, which is the essence of the breath, and then the, 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 all this dance into creation. And so we are back to nature, back to balance, for sure. Speaking of prana, I want to mention that we're going to have the founder of Prana Yoga Wear uh, on uh, next month. Uh that's so awesome. very, very excited about that podcast. And I also want to take a minute to thank Devin, who is with us today and who has been posting comments. Uh, his podcast is called The Healthy Traveler. He, I want to thank him for the really amazing uh, iTunes uh, uh, comments that he made. It was really appreciated. And I think we're going to continue to do some collaborative work together. So everybody check out The Healthy Traveler podcast. He's got some really amazing podcasts about traveling and um, tasty foods and just how to how to do it healthy. And and getting back to what you were saying about the breath work and how it can make when you add it to movement, I felt during the, the breath exercise that we did at the very beginning, even from that short amount of time, my I, I felt a little bit lightheaded. I felt my body start to tingle and get warmer. And the one thing that I that even before you said your feet, I was feeling my feet, whereas before I wasn't even aware of my entire body. So there's this, it's like there's uh, something about bringing us entirely into our body just by taking deep breaths. And I- Yeah, I, I wanna yeah, definitely, um, the thing that causes most greatest suffering in us 
is our feeling of separation. Uh, we, we come to life uh, with a sense of union with everything. We come to life and we're breathing uh, the essence of everything. We're feeling undissociable from uh, the, the, the mother that's holding us at birth. And, and suddenly everything happens to, to break us apart, to make the separation that as, a, as an infant, it's, it's crucially pain, painful. So trauma that happen in places we cannot remember. And so we go through life with a sense of separation, locking it down with all kinds of addictions and, and suppre suppressing this pain because it's so painful. And those of us who are awakened, who are on the path of healing of that, uh, you know, sometimes before you get better, you get worse. So you got to trust the process. The breath will put you in touch with this feeling you've been suppressing and it's challenging. But if you understand the source of all suffering is a disconnect and you use the breath with this the sense of oh even just feeling my feet you know when i was 18 and i went to acting school in paris they had an exercise where they say everybody you're going to be in, in pair and you're going to massage each other's feet i my feet had never been touched before i never received that sort of uh love without agenda let's put it that way and i cried for two hours i didn't even know what was going on i was like embarrassed oh my god and I felt my feet being touched and loved for the first time at 18 years old in acting school, which was really an opening to my spiritual reawakening to my spirituality then. And so it stopped maybe to just feel our body. Yeah, just, hey, my God, oh, my God, it's so yummy. I can't, like when I walk out of my bed in the morning, I, I actually get high on walking. It's this weird thing this morning. I was like, wow, that is this far out. Because when you're not fully identified with your body only and you're just walking it's just, and you're breathing and suddenly breathing, it's ecstatic. It's like, wow, breathing, you start to develop a connection, you enjoy it, it's, it's a treat. <laughs> and so when you connect with your body, now you've got access to your heart because it's really hard to go from your head to your heart. It says the longer, the, the hardest journey is the 12, the 12 inches right. from your head to your heart. But it's easy when you connect to your body first. And, and so when you are from your head to your body, to your heart, now you can connect with other people. Now you don't need to support yourself with addictions in your life by tossing down this disconnect because now it's back. Does that make sense? Yeah, well, and I, I want to add to that that it's literally the disconnection from our frontal lobe. You know, there's so much research that the meditation and, and breath work is actually connecting and uh, assisting us to have better connection with our frontal lobe, which is our rational centers. And whereas when we are disconnected and we're back in the middle brain, which is our more primal animal brain, which mm -hmm. really only allows us a fight, flight, freeze response. So it's, it's interesting you keep referencing the disconnect because it's like um, just through breath, we literally expand our consciousness. We literally gain access and further uh, use uh, to our frontal lobe, enabling us to have greater awareness, not only, not only of our own body, but of our own heart. And then uh, certainly I think of others and, and of life in general. Yeah, so the frontal brain is uh, activated. The breath we've done, the first breath we've done with fingers on the bottom of the spine, finger at the base of, of the skull, Inhale through your nose, out through your breath. You do this just out through the mouth. You do this just three minutes every morning, and it'll connect you right there. And you're not going to lose your heart centered or anything. In fact, you can always uh, press on your heart and do the same breath after. Can you talk about the, the purpose or the advantage of, of putting pressure at the the base of the, the skull and the base of the spine or the coccyx and and how is that affecting uh, the breath? Because the oh yeah, times? so um, so everything is is about uh, where you place your attention. Here is where the energy goes. So you don't even have to put your fingers there. You can just place your intention. But it's really hard to do without a touch. So things like uh, you know pressure point massages. Uh, you press, there are meridian and, and channels all over the body and really the base of the spine is the, the root, the, the, the abode where that spiritual energy uh, dwells, that kundalini energy and rises up through the spine. So there is an, uh, an, an activation there, but intention could suffice. You could just think of the base of the spine 
and breathe in and then it's invited up to the to the crown of uh, the base of the skull now uh, where you press to invite that intentional direction of energy but again intention could be enough to just have that movement it's moving energy upward basically it is the the, the ascension of energy into uh, a sense of greater awakening so you're not on the on the physiological level you're not in the flight and fat response your nervous system now is relaxed and you can come from a higher consciousness of trusting your being connected divinely guided and therefore you don't have to do it on your own and 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 contract that nervous system into that uh, fight and fright fright response and uh, of so with my french accent <laughs> it's a mouthful but you I get what it. i'm saying right yes okay and um uh, and uh, then you are um, able to raise the energy and to relax and expand. So the idea of to expand, uh, if, if, if you correct me when I'm just not pronouncing things right. <laughs> I, I think, no, I think you're doing beautifully and I love your accent, so keep okay. on. Yes. Thank you, Lisa. You're welcome. Ishwari, you mentioned, uh, I think when you were talking about being in acting class and the experience of having somebody actually touch your feet for the first time, that that was a part of how you started on your spiritual path, which is what brought you to this this work. What what really um, inspired you to go on a, a spiritual path? Oh, okay. You got three hours. No, I'm just kidding. I'm gonna make it short. <laughs> um, well, I was I was uh, I was. Uh, from a, I, the, the time I can remember, I was starting to be on spontaneous meditation. I was about six, six years old, and uh, it was uh, mainly when I was in a nature setting where I was really in alignment with the divine, and I just fall into a deep state of meditation and lose myself into feeling at one with everything. And my parents didn't really know, it was kind of making fun of me. Oh, look, she's doing a thing. She's staring at nothing for like hours. Like they're making fun. They just didn't understand. And then uh, I, I was talking with what I would call God and, and having this, this, this normal relationship with the unseen world. But it got to a point where I became so uh, out of control where I didn't really know how, uh, how to explain this to people if I was a normal little girl. So they took me to the doctors at eight years old and they prescribed me Valium, which cut me off from my relationship to God and my divine experience and turned me into a very depressed young uh, woman. Uh, and then I started to just uh, cope with the depression with drug and alcohol pretty much from a very young age until I was 21, which I was in Paris in acting school and doing some acting and modeling. And I decided not to move on in my life unless I have the answer of life. At, the, at this point, I had forgotten everything. I thought God didn't exist as my dad had tried to convince me. And uh, I didn't know who to turn to because I was... Uh, fulfill on the outside. I mean, fulfill is a, it's a flaky word. I was, I had everything on the outside. I had, you know, uh, everything that I wanted, but I had nothing in the inside. I was broken and, and very hurt. And so, uh, Devon, welcome. And uh, and so I uh, decided to um, uh, to end it there. And grace, I would say, it's grace got me the 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 the, the, the blessing to reawaken into me falling into a state of meditation where I, I was back again to finding myself as everything. And this is where my, my active spiritual path started then where I lived in many ashrams and continue from there. So that's the short version. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's a, um, I know it's a, a personal story, so I, I appreciate you sharing it. And now you continue this path and you continue to be an inspiration to people. Uh, I wonder, you know, what what you feel the future holds for you in addition to the book coming out. Uh, what's next? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, so the book, uh, re republishing the book may take a long time because I'm choosing um, a publisher that it's self-publishing is always the faster track. But I'm, I want to do it with that certain publisher because of his name. So, uh, so it's going to take a little bit of more time. How about, uh, however, uh, I have a, a couple online programs uh, to help people with the breath right, right away, uh, sort of like group program that uh, people get together. There's a little bit of one-on-one -on -one sessions with that. 
And uh, uh, la last time I launched it, the first time it was in the beginning of the year. It was the first time we did what we, you know, the, the celebrate um, process, which is more of the group process. Uh, on a live, just like here, we were on a live stream, video live stream. I had people tilt their, their laptops so they could lie down and breathe with that uh, the breath together in the session. And we did a lot of practices together. So I'm definitely going to relaunch that online program, uh, support people one-on-one, -on -one, uh, finish the book, uh, and uh, and just, just share my gift uh, in as many places as possible, including you know, live event. If I if if I find the, the right collaboration with certain people to do some uh, live event, whether it's where I am now, which is North Bay, or anywhere. I mean, I love going to to South California and all over. I mean, I'm open to. I'm just letting uh, God guiding me and how can I serve using the power of breath, basically. Yeah. That's wonderful. We always ask people to uh, share with our listeners or our viewers now. What would be the number one health tool that you recommend to people? And I'm assuming it's breath, but maybe there's something more specific or maybe there's something different. What's the top health tool that you recommend for people? The top health tool? Mm -hmm. For any, any health, uh, any top health tool? Yes. Well, I should say breathe. <laughs> yeah, well, I assume. But beside, beside the breath? Yeah. Um, beside the breath. Or if you want to just be specific about the breath. Uh, but sure, you can uh, add something in addition to breath work. The top health tools. Uh, we always want it easy, don't we? <laughs> but, <laughs> it's, a fast, it's a fast food world, right? We want it. We want it quick and and cheap. But we know you get what you pay for. What you what you put in is what you get out, right? It depends. <laughs> right. We've learned that it depends. What's your intention? So yeah. So 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 yeah. <laughs> So the, the top uh, health practice or the health a health tip. So typically, so typically it would be like health uh, tip. Yeah, make sure you get to bed before eleven o'clock at night because at eleven o'clock your spleen goes into work fixing your body and you want to be. Well, you see, it depends if you if you're young. It's actually not relevant this because. The, the the body purifies itself before one and the liver specifically before one a.m. But but the the reason young adult can do that is because their 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 physical body doesn't need to restore as much as we do after 30, 40 years old, I'd say. So I wouldn't if, to make a generality, it always depends really. But so um I, that's why I would say slow down, pay attention. Your there body you knows. Like you are you are sitting, let's say try a day without those I, pattern try the day without caffeine and since we talk about sleep if you're sitting for more than five minutes and you're like falling asleep you know you're sleep deprived so listen to your body it's telling you to go to bed earlier that's one thing so slow down uh, remove yourself so when we're out of balance let me let me bring something that can actually answer the question when we're out of balance well, what we call a negative cycle you know it's one of the old book uh, uh, diet for new america is the from pretty old but uh, it's still very relevant so so we're not in touch of what's good for us because we're uh, we want those bad things you know you, you know, the less you sleep the more junk food the more ad addiction the more you want to crave for that so if you are at that stage you have to be so gentle it's tiny little step backward and as you do the step backward so my mentor would be Assess where you are in your cycle. Are you really way of balance? And what's the little step that you so know your body knows that you can increase backward? And the more you come close to what we call the positive cycle, where you're just coming close to being in balance, that you actually long for healthy things, just like where I'm at. People say you're too sadvikish, very. Sadvik is the energy of light and purity. You're too sadvik. So I had to just start to do negative, like uh, like bad things, or well, or uh, I had, you know. Uh, uh, Lisa just goes, oh, come on, come drink a, a glass of champagne with me. <laughs> okay. All right. I have not oh, drunk. Like, so your health no, tip is we, drink we, champagne? A champagne, yeah, I like champagne. But okay. I haven't drunk it for 25 years, and then I started again, and I actually was extremely sad because in a way that wasn't very supporting, <laughs> living in this life, and so there's nothing wrong with that, but... Now I'm trying to find a balance. So if I see I go a little bit in a negative cycle, I get a little off balance, compassion first. What's the little thing I can do that's better? An hour more sleep, an hour earlier, 
10 minutes more meditation, 20 minutes more breath, a little bit more exercise. What's the little thing that's going to make me feel, ooh, I actually feel more in my body, so I want more of that. So what's the little thing that you know you've been push, pull, pulled away from that's going to bring you back to balance? And that could be movement, and that could be a slight shift in diet. According, in terms of diet, it's really easy. Eat more pranic food, prana, health force, uh, health, like life force, life force. So that's not in packaging food. Stay away from packaged food. Grab things that you find on the market, you know, fruit, vegetable, that has life force. Cook it as least as possible so you preserve the life force. We want life force to connect, vibrancy, health, energy. It's everywhere. And then we put in our body the junk food, the things that keeps us dense, and we're not plugged to higher Stay. We can't even meditate. We're so t uh, full of toxins. And then you can always do a little detox. I mean, I, even every day I use zeolite to detox my body because there's so, so many chemicals everywhere. So zeolite powder in the morning to have a little bit of detoxification and super food in your smoothie in the morning. You know, all these good things. It's, it's a lifestyle. Find a healthy lifestyle, a healthier lifestyle, a conscious, healthy lifestyle, good exercise, good sleep, and pranic food. There you go. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Ishwari. Is there anything else you want to add before we start opening up? Uh, I don't know if we want to open it up to anybody else that has questions. Go ahead. Type your questions. I mean, I have. I could speak for a long time. Kevin, you're on. Well, the one question I had is I wanted to know what the name of your book was because you've been talking about it a lot, and I'm really interested in it. So I'd like to know what the name of your book is and where I can go to uh, to purchase it. Oh, yeah, so I put it down on, on the chat and uh, uh, d right here. Drop that in again, why don't you? So what happened with the book is I put it out of, of the market. So you can't purchase it right now. I'm re-editing the book, but I'm offering some chapters of the book in this also the other link, which is the uh, Ishvari special offer.com. So if you click on that link and you click on, on on that page, Ishvari special offer.com, not only you get some of the chapters of the book, before I started my re-editing phase, which I started recently, but I will also you will be also in a list where I know you are interested when when it's when it's replaced on the market, and then I will uh, let you know for sure. So so that's one way to go about it. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Do you have any questions? Anybody else? Yeah, actually, um, years and years ago, when I was first studied started studying yoga, I was it. I was at a special place from uh, 25 to 32 and I was doing Hatha yoga. Um, but there was a book, I think you may have mentioned it called the science of breath. Do you know that book? Yes. It's a very old book. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little Brown book. Is that recommended as well? That, you know, I, I looked over, I skimmed through the books that are on breath right now. And um, mm -hmm. just to make a story short, there are two main traditions to the, the, the traditional path of yoga. Mm -hmm. And all this, you know, right now, everything that's written about breath is from the, what we call the, uh, the classical yoga approach. And, mm -hmm. so, and so for me, it's all about your understanding uh, if you translate pranayama as control of the breath uh, right there you are you are sucked into a, a belief system that you have any control over that which is at the root of our own creation and it already kind of uh, waters out the potential how you can use the breath so that's kind of a the way it's being translating from from all these the first uh, the first breath work, work books as as the pranayama uh, classical approach of the breath now in a most different tradition of yoga which is the most the most tantric approach of the yoga tradition pranayama the expansion of breath invites us to come back to realizing we're not ultimately in charge and we can master the breath but it fully immediately is mastering us and so now it's more of a co-creative that it creates more union than separation and it's more uh, fulfilling to practice with a different philosophy um, at the base of it so everything does change when the, the the philosophy at the best 
is more in alignment which what my experience was since i'm six years old was that we are not separated pranayama we're expanding that which is already there mm -hmm. we're realigning with versus control the breath you know so, so that's a big distinction that makes every other detail pouring out of uh, that uh, that that philosophic root uh, different basically mm -hmm. Can I ask another question, Lisa? Yeah. yeah. Which, what's that? Go right ahead. Oh, thanks. Um, so um, I, I noticed looking at your websites, you're doing a lot of stuff with marketing as well. You're doing some marketing. Yeah, you're doing yes, some marketing. Yes, is there a question? <laughs> well, there's quest yeah, the question is, what are you doing with it? What, with the marketing? Yeah, yeah. Don't you oh, have a marketing um, website, a business? Oh, I have a, I have a, uh, I, I, I would, I should say, I once had a marketing business, uh -huh. uh, and and I have a marketing website, ishvarije.com, because it's it's okay. connected, it's connected there. Uh, I. I used to take on clients and help them to do better with their marketing. People who have an, mostly an expert status, mm -hmm. you know, they have a book, they have a platform, they have a speaking uh, engagement, they have online courses, and I would help them to do better with that. Now, it comes a time where I do take on uh, clients who are already doing good and want to do better, but mainly I want to use these skills for myself. And the, all this takes a lot of time. I used to have a team helping me to build those, what we call the online funnel marketing strategies and systems and automating all of that. So, uh, so what do I do with that? Uh, I think it's the time for me to, you know, they say the, those who are fixing other people's shoes don't wear the, the, the wrong shoes. I think it's time for me to use it for myself. And thank yeah. you for reminding me. The cobbler's son we, has no shoes. Right, that's it. So I think it's time for use it for myself. In fact, the special offer, okay, special offer, ishwarispecialoffer.com. I created this page uh, about an hour and a half before we went on the post podcast. So uh, I still use, you know, those those uh, those ability to put together uh, what we call the copywriting, the graphic, the page itself to 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 plaster a last minute domain on it that works for that situation, a form, an email sequence, all that. Bang! Mm -hmm. I put this together in an hour. Uh, so those are skills that I, I, I really I feel grateful I acquired uh, so I I can relate on me and and when I feel that it's the right like the, the green light if you wish to do it mm -hmm. for for the breath and all these things I'm definitely I'm gonna use it to create the online programs and to refine it as we go for sure I was just curious thanks Devin, Thank you. do you have any Great other question. questions I'll kick you out and I don't know if Patricia wants to join is that all right yeah, not a problem. She answered all the other questions that I was going to ask already, so I appreciate all the help. And the the mantra was beautiful, by the oh, way. So thank you. I'm definitely definitely sent that to my myself so I can repeat that um, throughout awesome. the day. Awesome! Thank you so much. Yes. And after the next person, I'm hoping that Ishwari, you'll grace us with another breath exercise before we close. Oh, I would love that. Yes. Yeah. If anything, I would I would do this all day. So yes, yeah. after that we'll we'll do something. Yeah. Is there anybody else? Who wants to come on the open seat? We have an open seat. It's not a hot seat. It's pretty cozy. <laughs> <laughs> Not you won't be afraid. Not everybody wants to be seen. <laughs> oh, you are so beautiful. Come to the open seat. I want to see you. <laughs> I so want to see you, whoever you are. <laughs> Who is the next brave soul? <laughs> do they even know what to do to get into the seat? Sure. They do? Okay. They just click on join. Oh. And then we ac we accept them or not? But and then it's it, now now they they know what to do. They're all gonna want to click on join at the same time. Right. Yeah. Don't fight yeah. now. Just breathe, and slowly staying in the moment. Click on join. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's lock the seat. Go ahead and finish it up, uh, Lisa, and I'll I'll shut up, mute myself. <laughs> Right. Well, this is Lisa with Alternative Health Tools and Ishwari J. Thank you so much for coming on today for our first video podcast on Blab and sharing with us your wisdom about breath. I'm very excited and look forward to reading 
uh, the chapters that you're sharing from The Power of Breath. And uh, I would greatly appreciate it if you would wrap up today's conversation with another uh, breath exercise. Okay, so we don't have to get fancy. Uh, simplicity as its place. So we're just going to breathe the same length in and out. We'll do six count in, six count hold, six count out, six, and so in, hold, out, hold, six count. If that feels for you uh, who are listening, if that feels like you know you're seated and your spine cannot lengthen because of your posture, go ahead and lie down on your back, wherever you are. I think feels right, but for, for us, we're just gonna stay seated, but if you wanna really feel like you're sitting on the sitting bones, not on the tailbone, because that's really hard to lengthen the spine. So you, you, you tilt your pelvis forward to sit on the sitting bones, feet flat on the floor if you're on a chair. If you're cross-legged, again, lift the hips to make sure your knees are at least level with your hips or lower. That helps the lengthening of the spine. I feel like there's a, a, a thread if you if you're not lying down uh, from the top of your head, lengthening you up, and and so you're rooting down through your sitting bone and lengthening through the spine. And if you can do the ujjayi, just don't don't try too hard. But we're going to try to create a little constriction in the throat. When you whisper, it's the same constriction. When you uh, let's just breathe through the mouth. <sighs> Like you whispered, uh, yes, I can, I can hear Lisa doing it. You can keep the constriction as you breathe in also. That's the same constriction we're going to do, but we're going to breathe through the nose with that tightening in the throat. This closing of the valve of the, of the, of the intake of breath will allow it to expand. Okay, so breathe all the air out through your nose with the constriction in your throat unless you can figure it out, and that's okay. Now inhale, constriction in the throat, belly expand, middle rib cage, chest, counting six, hold, two, three, four, five, six, exhale, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three, four, five, six, inhale, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three, four, five, six, exhale, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three, four, five, six, inhale, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three, four, five, six, exhale. Hold. Inhale. Hear the sound inside the throat, hold. Exhale, like the waves of the ocean, hold. Inhale, allow yourself to enjoy the breath, to find pleasure in the breath, hold. Exhale. Good, and just make sure you breathe, breathe out, otherwise you would be a little bit uh, ready. <laughs> so that was very interesting that my internet disconnected while you were holding, and by the time I came back, I hope you took a breath. 
But <laughs> yeah, I know. eventually, you don't even need. I've been going into meditation stages where I don't breathe for a long time, way beyond what science believe it's healthy. So it, it transcends all science at this point. So I don't even need to go into detail, but just just be okay with a little bit of, of oxygenation. Just understand that if you've been doing the upper chest breath for all your life, of course you're gonna feel uh, a, a little dizzy breathing deeper, but you're seated or really sitting or lying down, so you're not gonna faint or anything. It's actually, um, it's just very enjoyable to get that little buzz and you you realize it can get you slightly high without needing anything else, which is really great. Sometime in the morning when I was doing my spiritual work, I was going through so much shadow work. I would wake up in place of despair and hopelessness and sadness and I didn't know what to turn to. I was like, I feel so disconnected from God. And, and the only thing I would do it was the breath. I would just force myself to sit on my mat and to do those more, a little stronger breath. Like it's in the chapter of, of the technique. This is the, uh, you know, Bastrika Prayanama. You expel, it's a heating breath. You just expel, expel, expel hold, inhale and hold. But breathing in and holding more pran, prana inside will definitely charge you up when you feel slightly depressed. Of course, it's good to, to, to bring it with movement, back bends and, all kinds of uh, hatha yoga practices can also help you opening up using the breath, holding the breath when you are in the pose and all kinds of things you can do that will bring you back to the place of joy and peace and vibrant health that is our, our birthright. That's your true essence when you start to use this practice, maybe 10 to 20 minutes every day, a little bit of breath, quiet your mind, do some movement and uh, increase this as you go because you're going to start to feel better and you want to feel better so you're going to want to do that more and if you don't have the 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 you know if you find you're too busy with your life uh, find a friend to do it with find the accountability partner that you can do it with or your family or your kids kids love that stuff so so there's no excuse to to to, to feel better it should be a priority but it, that's so so i hope that and we'll we'll continue communicating through emails as you enter your name at the uh, ishvari special offer.com so that I can support you there you go how does that feel a little bit Lisa? great i yeah, um, like my smiling. eyes my eyes started to water from from the breathing but that feels good feels like my body is you know waking up so uh, thank you so much Ishwari. it's always a pleasure and mm -hmm. uh, it's been a great great talking um again this is this is lisa thorpe with alternative health tools thank you devin with the Healthy Traveler podcast. And thank you, John Beethan, our producer. Uh, and everyone, please check out uh, Ishwari's special offer and learn more about her book, The Power of Breath. I thank you all for being here.